be another way that a, that a manager or a company might try to manipulate or increase their sales by basically making sales to a uh, related party at, at terms that aren't um, arm's length, meaning they're not like normal market sales because they're at, they're at related party uh, level. And then we have bill and hold sales, bill and hold sales, sales where the customer agrees to purchase the goods, but the seller retains a uh, physical possession until the customer requests shipment. So this is another thing that you can kind of imagine happening at the end uh, of the year. You can say, oh, well, what if there's going to be some type of sale that's going to be agreed upon, but the, the company is holding on to the inventory. They don't have to actually distribute the inventory until after year end so you can imagine the cutoff date sale happens but the the uh company is holding on to the inventory not shipping it till after the cutoff date well typically uh the the sales should be recognized when the service is done when the work is done when that relates to inventory goods that's usually at the point in time that they have been shipped or at the point they have been arrived whether it be sh fob shipping or fob uh, destination. So you can imagine this type of situation. Invoice goes out, accounts receivable goes up, sales goes up. They they say, well, this, they have, have purchased that has happened, but the inventory hasn't been shipped yet. And therefore, it's just basically on the books as a sale at that point, even though the transaction hasn't taken place. Revenue recognition process. So what's going to be the cycle for revenue recognition if we're selling goods? So if we sell inventory, we're going to have purchases. We're going to purchase the inventory that we're then going to mark up and sell. Then we're going to have the inventory. We're going to be tracking the inventory. And then, of course, we'll have cash sales. So this is the case. If we sell it for cash, we would have purchases. You can imagine them, us holding on to the inventory and then putting it possibly into a store, at which point we make sales for cash at the store point, And that would be our cycle. What if we had sales that were going to be made on account? We may have then purchases. We're then going to have the inventory that we're going to track. And then we're going to have credit sales. So now we have a sale. We can imagine basically a credit sale, accounts receivable sale. We didn't get cash at the point in time of the sale. We expect to get cash sometime in the future. And then, of course, uh, that's going to be recording the accounts receivable now being involved. Now that we have this accrual process, accounts receivable. And then we're going to have the cash collection on the accounts receivable. So most of the time when we think about basically sales on account, this is the cycle. This is the more complex cycle we would have. If we make sales for cash, we would have a more simplified cycle looking like this. Type of transactions related to the revenue process. What kind of transactions are we going to be looking at? We're going to have the sales of goods or rendering of services for cash or credit. So obviously we're going to have the sales that will be taking place. These are going to be the transactions that we'll be testing. So when we consider revenue, we will be testing these transactions. Our focus is on revenue, but notice this full transaction that will be happening, sales of goods or rendering of services, which will include revenue, possibly cash. And we'll talk about the accounts involved shortly. Receipt of cash from customers in payment for goods or services. We also want to test the receipt of cash uh, from customers for uh, the goods and services. And then we're going to have the return of goods by customers for credit or cash. So this is the other thing that could happen. The customer could come back and return the transaction. So we basically, these are the transactions we're concerned with, with regard to revenue recognition. What are going to be the accounts then that we will be considering with regard to revenue recognition, the revenue process. Now, our main account is, is of course, revenue. But as we test revenue, we're going to also be testing some of these other type of items to some degree or another, given the fact that we have to as we test revenue. Note that that could be a good thing because as we go through this testing process, as we go through these accounts, we will be testing uh, other types of accounts as we go, which means we can possibly do less testing once we get to those basically accounts and those transactions because we would have already touched on them to some degree as we've been considering the revenue process. So then these are going to be the financial statement accounts that will be affected. As we consider revenue, then we're also going to be considering these type of accounts because they're involved in the transactions. The sales transaction will involve accounts receivable if we make sales on accounts. Therefore, to some degree, as we test the revenue process, we will be testing accounts receivable. We'll have sales or revenue because obviously revenue will be involved in the sales transactions. Allowance for uncollectible accounts. 
This is going to be something that will be involved with accounts receivable as we consider the value of accounts receivable. The allowance for doubtful accounts will be part of that net value. And then, if, and then the bad debt expense representing those receivables that are not going to be collected. That's important with regards to the revenue process because really those bad debt expenses are, are sales that didn't really happen. It's really kind of a negative sale that happened when someone says they're not going to pay us then the sale never really happened. And we have this a bad debt expense is really kind of a negative sale in that sense. So it's related to the sales transactions. Cash receipts transactions related to this revenue process. We're gonna be dealing with cash, either with the cash sales or with the receipt from sales on account paying off the accounts receivable. So as we test then the sales, we'll also be testing cash. So we'll do some testing of cash, of course, in that process we will be concentrated on cash in and of itself as we as we test cash at that at some point we're testing the bank reconciliations and whatnot but as we test revenue we also look at cash to some degree at least on the deposit side of things and then we have the uh, receivables accounts receivables transaction because it will be going down as we collect cash on account and then we'll have cash discounts as well that we'll have to consider with regards to cash transactions then we have sales returns and allowance transactions. So sales return and allowance. And this is gonna include the sales returns and the sales allowances. We wanna consider these at the same point in time as we consider the revenue process because although these are broken out as separate type of accounts and they act kind of like expenses, they're really contra sales accounts. What that means if someone came back and said, hey, I'm giving the inventory back now. Well, the sale never really happened then it's a re it's basically a reversal so we don't usually decrease the sales account recall what we do instead is we make these other accounts with our which are kind of like contra sales accounts they're going to be uh credit they're going to be debit balance accounts that are basically revenue accounts that are debit balance contra revenue accounts and that's going to be the sales returns and allowances and then of course the accounts receivable also involved with uh the sales returns